Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda and I will be your Enchantress of Avalon, taking you on a journey into the lands mystical and into Avalon. For today's video, I have decided to feature the Fairy Queen, Anya. She is an Irish Fairy Queen and she is associated with pretty much all the other Irish fairies in a lot of myths and legends and she got linked with a lot of other fairy queens and I'm thinking all of my fairy videos will be a series and most of my videos talk about fairy in some way shape or form so let's get on with Anya so she was as I said an Irish fairy queen she was also a triple goddess similar to other Celtic goddesses it was very common for Celtic goddesses to be triple goddesses the Morrigan is a triple goddess Bridget is a triple goddess. Anya is a triple goddess. She is known importantly, uh, especially with modern pagans, as a protector of people who have been abused in some way because she does have a myth that entails her getting abused. And this makes her of someone that's often called upon to deal with trauma and she's a powerful figure in that way it's um she's beautiful to behold in that kind of very protective realm she is associated with certain times of the year especially those associated with the fae midsummer is a big time for her some people also celebrate her at luna saw which just passed that was august 1st but um she is like i said associated with the fairy times uh so to a lesser extent you could associate her with Beltane uh, which is also a big fairy time of the year so let's start with her let's go on to her name her name means bright joy splendor radiance it's this all-encompassing very warm and beautiful name uh, I if you see the title of the video her name is actually spelled a-i-n-e but it is pronounced anya i just want to clarify that and her name shows her original link to the sun she was first linked to the sun and later became celebrated as a lunar goddess so i kind of feel her as both being a solar and a lunar deity and the solar link would also explain her being celebrated in the light half of the year and especially if we look at that association with Luna Saw because Lu the god associated with that is a solar deity so it makes a lot of sense uh, what else oh the next thing I wanted to talk about was one of her most famous myths and she is a fertility goddess and similar to Demeter in the Greek pantheon she was associated with harvest and with uh, grain especially but instead of just being the one that you know brought grain and taught humans how to cultivate the crop as Demeter is said to have done she literally gave birth to it as if it was a baby and I think that's a really interesting story in and of itself like she gave birth to grain she didn't like invent it she didn't create it she gave birth to it and this links her so much to her role as a fertility deity. She is a fairy queen, and like most fairy queens, she has that link to nature and to fertility and sexuality. In fact, Anya is one of the famous fairy queens who is known to have taken a lot of mortal lovers. And in fact, a lot of Irish people can claim descent from Anya. If you look back, there's cert if you look back in your history, if you do have Irish ancestry, there are certain clan there are certain families in Ireland who have claimed descent from Anya for centuries because it was said that she had had an affair with this kinsman of theirs hundreds of years ago. So everyone from him onward is descended from Anya because they had a child together. And I think that that's really, really fun and really interesting. And we see this theme of uh, descent from fairy queens a lot in the Celtic lands it was there were many people who claimed descent from the 
great fairy queen melusina or melusine i mentioned her in my last video there are a lot that would claim descent from anya from Maeve, from all of these fairy queens that are known to have taken mortal lovers or just specifically any fairy didn't have to be a fairy queen because we see this theme of fairy women taking mortal lovers and mothering children with them or fathering some are males that father children with mortal women it unlike the whole like nephilim it's a male angel with a female human in the fairy stories it's more often a fairy woman who beds a mortal man gives birth to a child with him and therefore infuses his bloodline with fairy magic forevermore uh we have specific species of fairies that are more associated with doing this we want to go out of fairy queens for a moment there are the lanan she again i mentioned them in my previous videos uh my video on la belle dame saint merci i mentioned the lanan she because they were known as fairy lovers and they were known to use their fairy magic and their sexuality to inspire these mortal men they also were their lovers and often mother children by them and also the Gruthanun, which are the welsh lake maidens were known to often uh marry mortal men and mother children with them and then you have stories of selkies which are scottish seal women they are a type of water fae type of mermaid who often mother children with mortal men often by being tricked into a relationship with them similar to a swan maiden in that way and then they you know get their skin back or get their swan manes get their coat of feathers back and they run off sometimes taking their children sometimes not uh when i mentioned mermaids though i want to mention another really interesting fact about anya in her maiden form because again she's a triple goddess she is depicted as a mermaid so she is this fairy queen who embodies a lot of different elements you have her embodying the element of earth in being this literal mother of grain this important crop she's the mother of it she's a earth goddess you know a mother earth figure then you have her as a solar deity which links her with fire and then you have her as a lunar deity which links her with water and further linking her with water she's depicted as being a mermaid so she is truly this great fairy who you could see in all of these different aspects and i think that's really beautiful and she's just such a fascinating fairy queen who i don't think gets talked about quite enough a lot of people talk about the morrigan a lot of people might talk about Maeve, uh which i will do a video on her she's also incredibly fascinating and a total badass but i feel like Anya doesn't get enough love or representation a good number of people might know who she is but a lot of people just don't or if they know her they think oh yeah she's you know that fairy queen who's linked to fertility and you know the grain and everything but that's dismissive of how important that achievement in and of itself is to be the deity that your pantheon out of the pantheon you are the deity who is associated with the crops with grain with providing fertility of the land and fertility in people as well because these things are intrinsically linked it is so important these are deities that are often favored by the people worshiping them especially in ancient times why do you think Demeter and Persephone were the ones worshipped in the Eleusinian mysteries not just Persephone and not Persephone and Hades I mean Hades is linked there but the Eleusinian mysteries were Persephone and Demeter it was the mother-daughter bond it was that fertility goddess thing because both of them are fertility goddesses and you have the same thing here with Anya uh freya is a very important fertility deity and that's why she's the supreme female deity in the norse pantheon because again she was a fertility deity so whether your fertility deities are fairy queens or not they are incredibly potent figures and 
they really should be remembered. So I do like talking about and writing about these figures that are often kind of pushed off to the wayside, which is partially why I wanted to feature Anya before featuring another video about Morgan Le Fay, another video about like the Morrigan or a video to dedicate to Maeve because Anya is not as talked about and she's just as important. In many ways, a lot of these Irish fairy queens or just Celtic fairy queens can be seen as interrelated. They are, they could be seen as sister goddesses. They could be seen as reflexes of the other. And <clears throat> the more I research this and the more rabbit holes I go into, the more I feel into the energy of these fairy queens, the more linked they become to me. I think that there's something to be said that, yes, some of them are just completely individual deities, but some of them are just really intrinsically entwined. That's why uh, authors, like I have this book right here, Celtic Lore and Spellcraft of the Dark Goddess, Invoking the Morgan by Stephanie Woodfield. She has sections talking about Maeve and Anya, who again, are usually not linked so much with being part of, you know, the Morgan. She also links Morgan Le Fay with the Morgan, which is controversial, as a lot of people, both pagans and scholars alike, don't see that because if you're looking on the just basis of the written documentation we have then no there wasn't a you know written link there's no physical archaeological link between morgan Le Fay and the morgan but it doesn't mean they weren't linked and there's a whole slew of people who link them i myself feel that morgan Le Fay is is the most modern name by 1500 years modern that we give to many Celtic goddesses that are worshiped across the Celtic lands and the Celtic lands were vast. We're not just thinking the Britain lands, you know, we're not just saying that the Celtic lands were England, Scotland, Wales, the Isle of Man and Ireland. We are also thinking of Gaul, which is in France. So it's this huge swath of lands that all worshiped very similar deities but often by different names. And since they were given different names, who's to say they weren't really the same deity worshiped under other names? And many deities take many names. So I think there's just so much to dig into there and especially with the fairy queens. And I think the, it's interesting to link Anya with the Morrigan and by extension figures like Morgan Le Fay. And I highly recommend this book. It's a very interesting book. Even if you're just looking at it from a scholarship perspective, it's very intriguing. So thank you so much for joining me for this video on this Mermaid Monday. And I hope you will like and subscribe. It does mean so much to me. And please check out my blog, whiterosevavalon.life. Bye.